Hi everyone! So with my What's the Difference series that I've been making all about craft supplies, I've had a lot of you guys asking if I can make an episode all about adhesives. Well, can I? If you're new here, you might not know this about me, but I love tape and I love glue and I can spend forever in the adhesives aisle of any store just looking at all the fun new products. So this is actually part one of a two-part video because this video is going to be all about tape and I have a lot to say about tape so I figured I'd split it into two parts. The second part will be all about glue. So make sure that you press subscribe if you want to make sure that you're notified when I make part two all about glue and press the thumbs up button so that I know that you guys want to see it. So I actually made a video a few years ago all about my tape collection which as you can see behind me it's pretty impressive, but it's grown a lot since I made that video, and in this video I'm going to talk more about like what each type of tape is used for. But if you want a little Throwback Thursday action, I just figured I'd let you know there's another one right there that you can check out if you want to see that one as well. So let's start with duct tape, aka the entire right hand column of my background. Quick disclaimer, now that I'm making videos over on the Duck Brand YouTube channel, a lot of these rolls were sent to me for free, however, Duck Brand has no impact on this video. They don't even know making it. So these are all just my genuine opinions. So I already explained in one of the What's the Difference videos that capitalized duct tape is just a brand name for the generic duct tape. So I love Duck Brand so much for their colored tapes and their patterned tapes. However, I actually have a different favorite company for just generic silver plain duct tape. And that is Intertape. You get so much on each roll and it smells so good when you open up the packaging. I don't actually have any on hand right now, which is weird because usually I always have a few rolls, but you can get some on Amazon. You can get a three pack for pretty cheap and they'll last you forever. So just plain silver duct tape is great for projects where you just need to hold something together and it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's also great for building a base if you're making something out of duct tape like a wallet. You can first make it out of just plain gray tape and then cover it in your fun colors and patterns since they can get fairly expensive and you don't want to waste them on the inside parts that no one's ever gonna see. But honestly duct tape is totally worth the cost because you can basically find any color or or any pattern you could possibly be looking for these days. From glitter to super sparkly to glow in the dark to cupcake scented. These are great if you quickly want to add a pop of color somewhere or a pop of bacon or a pop of pineapple. And there are tons of crafting DIYs of things you can make out of duct tape over on the duct tape YouTube channel and one video a month over there is made by me so make sure you go check that out if you haven't seen them yet. So the downside to duct tape is that while it's repositionable kind of while you're working as long as you haven't really pressed it down yet, once you press it down and you leave it for an extended period of time it's not removable and it'll leave kind of a gross residue if you try to peel it back up. So just be totally certain about the projects that you're using duct tape on and do not use it to hang things on painted walls because it's gonna take down the paint with it as my parents found out when I moved out of my childhood bedroom and they had to repaint the entire thing. Also, duct tape is terrible by hand, but if you want a cleaner cut, you can use scissors or an X-Acto knife. Just make sure that you use an old pair of scissors because eventually the adhesive is going to gunk up the scissor blades. Or you could get the scissors that Fiskars makes specifically for duct tape if you're going to be cutting a ton of tape you might want to get those. And if somehow the pattern that you want is not available from the plethora of duck brand duct tapes. There are several other companies making similar craft tapes like Scotch in their Expressions line or a company that I found called Platypus or sometimes you can just find random off-brand companies that are making craft tape like these that I found one day at Ross. They don't have any brand name on them but look at how awesome this shiny brick pattern is or this floral tape that actually has scallops cut into the bottom of it. I feel like I have to conserve these rolls because because I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to find them again. So moving on, masking tape and painter's tape are often used interchangeably. Masking tape is a strong paper tape that was designed so that you can mask off something that you're painting. But if you're just using it in craft projects, it just kind of gives a different look than duct tape since it's matte rather than shiny since it's made of paper and not plastic. It comes in several 
different widths and colors. I happen to only have black on me right now, but of course it comes in plenty of colors. And Scotch has even started making patterned masking tape in their expressions line, like this ruler masking tape, which I just think is so great. And then we have Painter's Tape, which is traditionally a bright blue color, and it's used to mask off the edges of a wall that you might be painting. The adhesive is rated by the number of days that you can leave it on your wall without leaving a residue. And besides using it on your wall, it's used for tons of craft projects where you just want to mask something off and be able to remove the adhesive after painting. Then we have Artist Tape, which is my personal favorite. I love it. So it's traditionally white, but I have it in a few other colors and widths as well. The adhesive is pretty light, so it can be removed and repositioned, even on paper, which most other tapes would tear. It's acid-free, so it's not going to yellow, and you can use it in archival projects. And it's often used to hold paper to a drawing board, or to mask off part of a piece of paper that you're painting. In craft projects, I use it whenever I need a temporary adhesive to kind of hold something out of the way. Really, it's probably the tape that I reach for the most while I'm crafting, just for any random tape needs. But the other ones have their purposes too. This one's just my favorite. And just like the masking tape, this one just has a slightly different look from the very matte masking tape or the very shiny duct tape. It's kind of in the middle with a slight sheen, but still fairly matte. After that, we have gaff tape, which is often used in theaters to hold down cables so people don't trip over them. But sometimes I'll use it in crafting too. It's pretty expensive, but it comes in a whole bunch of different colors and it has a really cool cloth-like texture. But the main thing is that it does not leave a residue when you remove it, which is great in theaters when people are moving things around all the time. So a lot of you guys were asking me about washi tape, of which I have my very large collection displayed over there. It is a paper tape with a pretty weak adhesive. It comes in tons and tons of colors and patterns, and most of the rolls that I have are 15 millimeters wide, but some are smaller, some are wider. I've probably used washi tape in a hundred craft projects because it's so easy to use and it's not permanent so you can remove it without leaving a residue. To be honest, I kind of have a washi tape problem because whenever I see a cute roll, I just have to buy it. And now I've got quite a few of them. There are worse problems to have. So moving on to clear tapes, let's talk packing tape. Packing tape is generally clear, and it's a really strong plastic tape. One of the downsides is that you cannot tear it by hand, but instead you have to use scissors or an X-Acto knife. It bonds really well to cardboard, because obviously it's often used to keep boxes closed. And it's also great if you need some sort of makeshift lamination, like if you need to protect a piece of paper that's going to be exposed to the elements. Or you could just stick it to itself to get a clear plastic sheet that you could use for a variety of craft projects. And these days packing tape also comes in a bunch of fun colors, so you can use these to dress up some packages that you're sending, or just use them in craft projects the exact same way you would use duct tape. Next up is scotch tape, or cello tape for all of you, across the pond. You can get these either single-sided or double-sided, and I use the double-sided tape all the time when I don't feel like waiting for glue to dry, especially if I'm attaching paper to paper, since that's where this really works the best. For the single-sided tape, I usually get the gift wrapping tape, which is completely transparent, unlike the cheaper, more traditional types, which can be kind of cloudy, and I find that that looks pretty amateur. You can also find colored tapes on dispensers like these for when you want the color of washi tape, but the stronger adhesive of scotch tape. And these aren't quite as common, but if you really look for them, you can find them. But another really fun thing that scotch is doing now for their tape is coming out with some really fun tape dispensers that look like shoes or a martini glass or a football helmet, really whatever strikes your fancy. So I don't actually have any here, but you can also use electrical tape in crafting. It's made of vinyl and it is slightly stretchy, and obviously it's usually used in electronics, but you can also just use it for whatever crafts you want, especially if it's a project where you need a ton of one color of tape because electrical tape 
tape is super cheap. This one I do have. Mounting tape is a foam tape that is double-sided and is used to mount things to the wall. You'll have to check the packaging to see how much weight the kind that you get can support because you don't want to use it to hang up a giant framed photo and then have it just crash down to the floor, taking all of the paint off of the wall with it. But it's thicker than the other tapes that I showed, so if you're doing a project where you want something to look a little 3D and kind of stick out from the background, like if you're making a fancy greeting card design, for example, then mounting tape is great for that since it has a thickness to it. Okay, this next one is really fun. It is polyester film tape. I have a few rolls in a thin silver and then also a slightly thicker gold, and I use these to decorate at Christmas. Originally it was used for things like splicing movie footage, but there's no law that says you can't use the pretty shiny tape for crafting as well. And it's actually pretty cheap if you buy it on Amazon. Just be aware that the adhesive isn't that strong if you're putting it on things other than film. I'd say it's maybe slightly stronger than washi tape. After that, we've got floral tape, which to be honest, I've never really used it in a craft project. I used to have a roll in my box of tape, but I never really used it, so honestly I don't know where it went. But if you're making floral flower bouquets or other floral arrangements, this is what you're going to want to use. So now, if you want a really thin tape, this is where you're going to want to get nail tape. It kind of just looks like a really thin polyester film tape, so if anybody knows if they're actually just the same thing, let me know because I don't actually know. But it's generally used to mask off designs on your nails when you're painting them, or you can even use the nail tape as part of the design. Or if you're not into nail art, you could also use it for a really any small intricate craft project. Alright, so those are all of the general categories, the basic types of tape that I use, but now I have a few kind of fun specialty tapes that I thought I would show off. Tons of companies now are making chalkboard tape and dry erase tape, so you can just write on them and then wipe it off, and it's easier to just cut off a small piece of this tape and stick it on wherever you want it to go, rather than messing around with chalkboard paint, especially if you only need a really small section. So I've had this tape for years, and honestly, I'm not even sure where you can get it anymore. But it's really cool, it's printed with lines that you can mask off to make numbers and letters so that you can label something. I have a few rolls of reflective tape, which is often used on cars and things you want to make sure that you can see in the dark. I haven't really come up with a ton of craft projects using these since it's so thick, but it looks kind of space agey, so if you're doing some kind of futuristic inspired craft, this might work out well for you. And then I've got some aluminum foil tape, which is basically sticky aluminum foil. And it's great if I want a really shiny tape that doesn't have quite as much of a surface texture as the duct tape has. And then hidden away in my washi tape collection, I also have some fabric washi tape, which is awesome. It's basically sticky fabric, and it just gives kind of a different texture than normal washi tape. And then at Daiso once, I found that this lace tape which is tape that's been cut out to look like lace. You don't get very much on the roll, so I've been saving it for the perfect project. And I think that's it. Let me know in the comments if I missed any major categories of tape, or let me know what your favorite kind of tape is. And also let me know if you want to see part two of this video all about different types of glue. So if you want to see a DIY that I made with some of this duct tape, you can watch the Waffle Purse DIY, which is based on Parks and Rec. You can watch that right here. Or if you want proof that I was also a total tape nerd a few years ago, you can watch my old video about my tape collection right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to press the like and the subscribe button, and I will see you all again next week. Bye everyone!